video we're going to play Gun Doctor with our pistols and talk about the Type 1 malfunction. So the Type 1, or failure to fire, is basically where you go to fire and click no bang. So, first things first is we're when we're playing Gun Doctor, we are working on symptoms of this this item right here. Just like with a car, you if you're driving a manual and you think you're going to go at a light and you push the gas and try to release a clutch and all you get is a revving engine, well, the first thing you're going to think is, is the thing even in gear? Oh yeah, I switched it out, uh, out of uh, first gear or whatever into neutral and I just left it there. It happens. I've done it plenty of times. So, or if you have an automatic where you can be flipped into neutral, maybe someone banged against it. I've done that myself. I'm getting a drink out at a light and I banged, but I didn't think I uh, slapped it into neutral. I've done that. It's simple symptoms from experience. We can basically do an immediate action. Once we realize that something happened, we go through correction and we immediately try to resolve it based on the symptoms that we are getting back from it. What we don't want is to, the reason I'm making this video is I see too many people get a click as if the pistol morphed into something that they are not even familiar with anymore, like they don't even know what it is that they're holding. They're like, what is this? So, basically, we need to understand why this happens, and there's four components to it. So, not five, four, <laughs> numb thumb, but uh, there's four components to it. Number one, magazine. Magazine can be an issue with that, and that is basically the um, magazine spring or the follower. Uh, the magazine spring could be basically worn so much that the slide is moving faster than the magazine can feed rounds into, and it just so happened not to cause a different kind of malfunction, it just failed to completely, completely failed to <clears throat> basically push those rounds up in time for the slide to catch it and feed it in. So, that can happen. Uh, and that, yeah, that does kind of happen <laughs> uh, sometimes. But uh, then, of course, you have the follower, where basically you might have such a dirty magazine where the follower is actually caught inside the body of the magazine, and it's not allowing rounds to feed upwards. I've had that with really dirty guns before, uh, where dropping sand in them or, or whatever, I've actually had that happen. So, or if a mag spring actually fails and, and breaks, which I've had happen like two or three times in my whole life, but it does happen. So, the next one is ammunition. Bad primer on a bullet can have something to do with that. And with a double action, typically what people will say is, restrike, try again. Do you want to have time with that? That is your decision. We're going to get to that. We need to be thinkers before we're, you know, just reacting or whatever. So, the muscle memory gorillas, not here. So, if you're using a firearm for self-defense or in self-defense of others, you need to be using this. This is your best tool, not just So, we're trying to stay away from that. We need to think. Symptoms. So, ammunition, probably a bad primer, but you want to sit there and restrike. All you know is you got a click and no bang. So, that basically means that it was in battery. For the most part, guns will be in battery. And, you know, that means that tried to hit the primer and the primer didn't go off. So the next one is a failure of the firearm itself and that's where you can also think, you could think that it's actually ammunition related. Uh, whereas actually in my case I've actually had broken firing pins and I got a click in the middle of the firing sequence. Uh, that happened to my FNFAS or FNS, not F FAS, uh, that happened to my FNS. Uh, where the firing pin actually broke in the middle of a firing string. Uh, and then it's happened to uh, a couple of SIGs and, uh, and it's happened to a Glock. So yeah, it happens. And also, maybe a worn striker spring will prevent the striker from actually hitting hard enough. So, uh, that could be an issue. Not all too common, except for people that like to modify their guns a lot, oh, or they're dry firing so much. That was the problem with my FNS and all the other guns that really had broken firing pins. It was because I wasn't using snap caps when I was doing dry fire practice. 
use snap caps. They're there for a reason. I use the ones with the rubber uh, rubber butts. So the fourth one is you. The most common one, you. You failing when you go to the range to even insert a magazine. I have seen this where you fail to even insert a magazine and you don't even try to charge it to be like, you should know what the feeling is when you actually have a loaded uh, weapon, but some people will even fail to load the gun. So yeah, you're gonna draw and get a click. It's not funny, I've done it myself. It happens, but you are the cause for it most of the time. The next one is failure to properly seat the magazine. This happens a lot when people get into their tactical routine where they're just trying to be mil-spec mojo and on their uh, little poo butt gun range. So failure to seat the magazine and most of the time what ends up happening is you go click, magazine falls off or it was just inserted enough just before it would actually lock in to where it actually fed around in. So also one of the things is that you'll see is a round doesn't even chamber because you know those people that have guns where the slide release is right here like on a SIG 226, 229, the classic SIGs, they will release the slide before the magazine is even locked in. They try to time it perfectly to get the reloads right on. That, that, that can be a problem. There's nothing wrong with using the slide release, uh, but it's people getting, people being the problem, not the gun or the ammunition or the magazine. It's people being the problem. So, therefore, you need to slow down. But now, now that we have the why in my little rant, now we go on to how we correct it. So, we have the symptom, right? So, we have the symptom, click no bang. Now, with this firearm, I can tell the difference between when it hits something like a dead primer or when it actually is empty. I can get a reverberation in the grip. It actually vibrates in the grip when it's empty. And when it has a snap cap, it basically has a different feeling than even when it hits a dead primer. So it is completely different in this firearm, this uh, SAR CM9. It actually has very different feelings for each thing and I've learned that over time. But if you're not really familiar, all you need to know is you gotta click. So, now, how are we going to improve this? So, my recommendation is, of even for you beginners out there, I recommend you go through a process which is basically common sense. You need to prepare yourself for later training. And if you're one of those people who is practicing to defend yourself and others, then you need to start practicing the proper way right now. First step is, you need to recognize that you got the click and no bang. And then you need to seek cover or concealment. Sometimes in an urban environment, you're not gonna really have much more than concealment, especially inside a house. Most of what you're having is concealment. So basically, especially if you're in a gunfight or whatever with like an active shooter or whatever. So you need to improve your position. That can be simulated by simply taking a knee or if you're practicing in your living room with snap caps, then you were basically kneeling behind a couch or a table or something, concealing yourself from view or whatever, improving your position. So that's the first thing people need to do, not imitating the target that they're practicing against and just standing still. I see that all too much and it's annoying. I have to do that here so where I'll be out of a camera view unless I back up. But first thing that you do is improve your position. And then obviously diagnosis. You know that something went wrong and so you look and then obviously the slide's locked all the way forward. You can go boom, boom, and look to see if the magazine's inserted all the way. And what you can do is you can tap and then rack and then assess if you need to go bang, then go bang. But most of the time on the when you're learning this stuff, they t tell you to, you know, go bang. But one of the biggest things to do is you need to diagnose it. And once you are done diagnosing it, get your head out of your gun and into your surroundings. Focus on something else. You shouldn't need to look at the gun while you're tapping 
and racking. You should be focused on your surroundings. So, that's something that you need to practice is improve your position, diagnose, and then immediate action. And then back into the fight. So, that's as simple as it is. It's that simple. You improve your position, diagnose, immediate action, back in the fight. Four steps. So no matter what four symptoms those are, or what four causes there are, what four whys, whatever you want to call it. So, it's really that simple. So, i got a live magazine here, and I'll go ahead and demo this, put my money where my mouth is. Okay, so I have an empty chamber right now to simulate it. You can use, you know, a snap cap. I wouldn't recommend doing it on the range because you could lose it. I would just use a spent piece of brass. And I'd basically, you just go click and then improve your position, quickly diagnose and view your surroundings and then reassess. <laughs> then you're back in. It's that simple. It can be done very quick. The more you practice, the faster you're going to get. But you need to learn the steps and do it properly from the start. Don't do that, well, I'm a beginner, so I'm just going to stand and imitate my target. Once you get better at this beginner stuff, then it becomes harder to not stand still. So do it slow, doing it properly. Go snail pace if you need to. But as you're doing it, you're doing the whole shebang properly. That is the key to it. So, once you get a click, no bang, you simply simply improve your position, diagnose, and assess. After immediate action and assess. So, if you need to fire, then fire, just like I did. Okay, just to go a little bit faster, Click, improve position, diagnose, immediate action. That's as simple as it is. You simply diagnose, you might see right away that your magazine is not seated all the way, or your magazine might have fallen out. So you can usually tell by weight, but as a beginner, there's nothing wrong with adding in that step. If you're simply looking like this and rotating the gun, there is no real issue with that. You're in the diagnosis phase. You have taken cover or concealment. You have improved your position. Once you are done diagnosing, your eyes are not on the gun. They are on your surroundings. This should be instinctive to just tap and rack. The way you go about it should be instinctive. So, again. Click. Improve position. There we go. So, immediately head gets out of the gun after diagnosis. It's not that hard to do. Go slow at first. Practice, practice, practice. It's going to be okay. Last thing I want to hit on is basically why I am encouraging you guys to not, you know, just stand there and imitate your targets. As I mentioned previously during the firing uh, demonstration, uh, or the live fire demonstration, basically you're starting from the beginning with bad habits of standing static and in, in basically impersonating your target. Uh, so you're basically pretending to be the target where you're just standing out in the open. That is a bad habit. If you take your training seriously, you're always going to, you need, you will understand if you take your training seriously that you will always default to your lowest level of of training and if you're training from the get-go is to improve your position and keep yourself alive and aware of your surroundings as much as possible then that will keep you alive if you get a click and you see that your target is moving then you might decide that your position is good enough you're barely peeking around there's no one else around but you have a split second to diagnose or maybe you just know the symptoms and you know the immediate action or you know you were in the middle of firing a magazine and it went click so it's probably light primer or you know the uh, 
the, the striker spring or, or whatever, light primer strike, whatever. You just know from your experience. So you're thinking. You're thinking as you go, but you're going through that phase. You can skip certain things as you're getting more experienced. So you're able to evaluate the situation your eyes are on, the situation you're in, and your surroundings. That is the key here. That is the key to survival is situational awareness. If you take away your situational awareness to try to basically look like some Instagram shooter, then you are going to be, you are not going to be an asset, you are going to be a liability to yourself and others. Don't do that. Do it right. Do it right from the beginning. And then as you get advanced, use your brain from the beginning. And as you get more advanced, you'll learn how to approach different situations in a tactically sound manner. So, with all that said, I know this was a long video, but I hope you can understand now why it was a long video. It makes sense. You need to sit there and practice the right way every time and from the beginning. So with all that said, get some training, think for yourself, use your brain. It is the greatest tool. It is much better than this one. So it'll get you out a lot more than, you know, this little thing that goes pew pew. So with all that said, I appreciate you guys watching and stick around for another video like this on type two and type three.